Grifo separates every enemy into three categories, Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3. When you first start a level, the game will spawn a certain type and amount of enemies depending on the level you're on. Levels 1 and 2 will spawn an enemy from Tier 1 and Tier 3. Levels 3 through 5 will spawn an enemy from each tier. Levels 6 through 8 will spawn two enemies from each tier. Levels 9 and 10 will spawn an extra Tier 2 enemy. And levels 11 and up will spawn an extra Tier 3 enemy. Sometimes you'll notice you'll play on a level with a bunch of the same enemy. This is because when a tier 3 enemy spawns, there is about a 3.2% chance to instead spawn a group of enemies. This group can be 3 animals, 4 ducks, 10 gnomes, and a handful of other variations shown on screen. When a level starts, all enemies will be spawned on a level point in the furthest tiles from the repo van. Level points are basically just checkpoints placed around the map that enemies use to spawn on and pathfind to, similar to AI nodes from Lethal Company. Every enemy will idle on that level point for a certain amount of time depending depending on the level you're on. The higher the level, the less time enemies will idle. There is also a 20% chance for these idle times to pretty much be non-existent. If you step within 20 units of an enemy, this will cancel out their idle time. Please note that there are rare cases when an enemy will spawn very close to the repo van. This is currently a bug that basically just happens when the game has trouble spawning the enemy, so it respawns the enemy close to a player. Enemies in Repo have a despawn mechanic. Every enemy will despawn after a certain amount of time. You can think of this time as a countdown separated into two parts. The first part of the countdown will begin as soon as the enemy spawns and it will last between three and four minutes. There is no stopping or slowing down this countdown. Once it's complete, the second part of the countdown will begin which lasts between 20 and 40 seconds. Every enemy has a 20 unit bubble around them and if any players step within this bubble, the countdown will completely stop. As soon as all players step out Outside of this bubble, the countdown will continue, and once this countdown is complete, the enemy will despawn. As soon as an enemy despawns, they will be given a respawn timer. The longer you're on a level, the shorter this time will be. For example, if an enemy despawns in the first 10 minutes, its respawn timer will be 4 to 5 minutes. But if you've been on the level for over 50 minutes, the enemy will pretty much respawn right away. Now, when you kill an enemy, this will increase respawn timers by 3 times the amount. So, if you were to kill an enemy in the first 10 minutes, its respawn timer would be 12 to 15 minutes. But if you've been on the level for over 50 minutes, the enemy would respawn in just three seconds. There are two other conditions that can speed up enemies' respawn timers. The first condition is the final extraction point. As soon as you complete the final extraction point, all enemies will immediately respawn and their respawn timers will be set to one second. This means that if you kill an enemy after the final extraction point, it will respawn right away even if you've only been on the level for a couple minutes. The second condition is noisy items. Whenever an item makes a noise, this will subtract five seconds from all respawn timers. For example, let's say the television turns on. For Every second it's on, respawn timers will drop by 5 seconds. This is true for pretty much any valuable that makes noise, including the radio, grandfather clock, doll, notes played by items like the harp or piano, and even weapons like the handgun and shotgun. Most of the time, you want to avoid making any noise, however, you can take advantage of this mechanic to farm orbs. When enemies respawn, they will always respawn somewhere between 18 and 34 units of a random player, so if you know an enemy is going to respawn soon, be prepared for it to respawn close by. All enemies use field of view cones, and in order for an enemy to spot you, you must be in their vision for a certain amount of time. Let's take Headman, for example. If I were to sprint in and out of the Headman's vision quickly, he wouldn't spot me. This is because the Headman must be able to see me for a full second in order to spot me. One of the best ways to avoid being spotted is to crouch or crawl. The reason crouching and crawling is so effective is because it lowers the enemy's field of view cone. As you can see, if I were to crouch, the Headman's vision immediately updates and is much smaller than before. If I were to crawl, his vision shrinks even more. Not only does his vision get smaller, but now, in order for the headman to spot me, I must be in his vision for even longer. If I'm crouching, the headman must see me for two and a half seconds, and if I'm crawling, the headman must see me for a full five seconds in order to aggro onto me. This is the case for most enemies. As a general rule, standing gives enemies 100% vision and they'll need to see you for one full second. Crouching gives enemies about 80% vision and they'll need to see you for two and a half seconds. And crawling gives enemies about 40% vision and they'll need to see you for the full five seconds, which makes crawling the absolute best way to hide from enemies. Usually, you can only crawl if you're hiding underneath a piece of furniture, but you can actually force yourself to crawl by holding an item above your head. I personally don't find myself doing this very often, 
but in a pinch, this can be a very useful technique to know how to do. Just keep in mind that any item you're holding is basically an extension of you. If an enemy doesn't see you, but can see the item you're holding, they will attack you. Every enemy also has proximity awareness, which just means that if you're within a certain distance of them, they're able to see you right away, even if they aren't looking at you. For most enemies, their proximity awareness is three and a half units while you're standing and two units while you're crouching or crawling. Please remember that these numbers are for most enemies, not all of them. If you'd like to read more into each enemy and their vision, I'll leave a link to a notepad written by the legendary Chibu One, which contains all the information you need. Every enemy in Repo can hear except Peeper and Shadow Child. The only thing that matters when it comes to noise is the source of the noise. Every noise in Repo, including voice chat, will create an audible bubble. Let's take sprinting for example. If I were to sprint down this hallway, you can see each step creates a bubble. Any enemies within that bubble will hear that noise and pathfind towards the center of it. Sounds like walking, sprinting, or trank gun will create relatively small audible bubbles. Sounds from jumping, tumbling, or hitting an item will create medium-sized bubbles, and sounds from grenades, breaking items, and extraction points will create big bubbles that can notify enemies up to one or two tiles away. There are also giant audible bubbles that come from shotguns and interactable items like the harp, animal box, and piano. These bubbles can notify enemies up to two or three tiles away. The only sound you don't have to worry about are your footsteps while crouching because this will not make any noise. As a side note, the huntsman can hear five times further than every other enemy in the game. This means that if a noise is five units wide, the huntsman can hear it up to 25 units away. Some of you may have heard that after the final extraction point, enemies will pathfind towards you. This is partly true and partly not. As soon as you complete the final extraction point, a huge audible bubble will be pinged at the repo van. This bubble will ping on the repo van four times in the first 10 seconds after completing the final extraction. This bubble is 100 units wide, which can notify enemies up to four or even five tiles away. Again, any enemies in this bubble will pathfind towards the center of it. After those four pings, this bubble will ping a random player on the map. It'll ping a player after 3 seconds, then 5 seconds, 7 seconds, 9 seconds, and so on and so forth until it reaches 30 seconds, in which case it will continue pinging random players every 30 seconds. Basically, when you complete the final extraction point, the repo van will be pinged a few times, then you and your team will be pinged over and over until you leave. The longer you're on the level after completing the final extraction, the less you'll get pinged. Now, this doesn't actually ping a player, it pings a level point. The game will ping a random level point in inside the tile you're in. As a fun fact, there are no level points inside extraction rooms, which means enemies will never pathfind into these rooms unless they hear or see you, and you cannot be pinged if you're inside an extraction room. Huge shout out to Geoswell, Agmus, and Shabu for help researching these subjects. Please check the pinned comment for any updates, and make sure you like the video if you learned something new.